This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at the Winkler method. The Winkler method determines the concentration of dissolved oxygen in a water sample. It is used to measure the biochemical oxygen demand, or the BOD. The Winkler method has three main steps, which we can see here. Next, we look at each step in more detail. In the first step, the dissolved oxygen in the water is fixed by adding an excess of manganese sulfate in an alkaline solution. If we look at the changes in oxidation states, we can see that the manganese 2 plus ions are being oxidized and the oxygen is being reduced. In the next step, iodide ions are oxidized in acidic solution to form I2. In this step, the manganese is reduced and the iodide ions are oxidized. In the final step, the iodine produced is titrated with aqueous sodium thiosulfate. So next we look at the steps involved in calculating the BOD of a water sample. The first step is two samples of water are collected. One sample is immediately tested for the concentration of dissolved oxygen. The second sample is stored in the dark for five days at a constant temperature. After five days, the concentration of dissolved oxygen is determined. And to calculate the BOD, subtract the final concentration of dissolved oxygen from the initial concentration of dissolved oxygen. The BOD of a water sample is usually given in milligrams per decimeter cubed or parts per million, ppm. Before we look at an example, we need to know the molar ratio of the oxygen in the first step and the thiosulfate ion in the third step. So in step one, the ratio of O2 to MnO2 is one to two. In the second step, the ratio of the MnO2 to I2 is one to one. And in the third step, the ratio of the I2 to the thiosulfate ion is one to two. So from this, we can determine that the ratio of oxygen to the thiosulfate ion is one to four. This means that one mole of oxygen reacts with four moles of thiosulfate ions. So let's look at an example. Two 300 centimeter cubed samples of river water were collected. One sample was tested for the concentration of dissolved oxygen immediately, and the other was stored in a dark place to be tested after five days. At day zero, 15.2 centimeters cubed of 0.02 mole per decimeter cubed sodium thiosulfate solution was required to react with the iodine produced. Calculate the dissolved oxygen content of the water. To do this, we use the equation N equals CV, where C is the concentration of the sodium thiosulfate solution and V is the volume used in decimeters cubed. So the concentration of the sodium thiosulfate solution was 0.02 mole per decimeter cubed and the volume used was 15.20 centimeters cubed which is then converted to decimeters cubed. So when we multiply these two together we get 3.04 times 10 to the negative 4 moles. Previously we saw that the ratio of oxygen to sodium thiosulfate is 1 to 4. So to calculate the amount of dissolved oxygen we divide the amount of sodium thiosulfate used in the titration by four, which gives us 7.60 times 10 to the negative five moles. Next, we'll convert amount in moles of oxygen to mass of oxygen. To do this, we multiply the amount in moles by the molar mass of oxygen, which is 32.0 grams per mole. So the mass of oxygen is 2.43 times 10 to the negative three grams. In this step, I've multiplied the mass by 1000 to convert from grams to milligrams. So the mass of oxygen is 2.43 milligrams. To find the concentration of dissolved oxygen, we divide the mass in milligrams by the volume of the solution in decimeters cubed. This gives us a concentration of 8.11 milligrams per decimeter cubed. One milligram per decimeter cubed is equal to one ppm. So we can give the concentration as either 8.11 milligrams per decimeter cubed or 8.11 ppm. Next, we'll determine the concentration of dissolved oxygen in the second sample after five days. The second sample required 8.75 centimeters cubed of 0.02 mole per decimeter cubed sodium thiosulfate to react with the iodine produced. 
So once again the first step is to calculate the amount in moles of sodium thiosulfate used in the titration. So when we multiply the concentration times the volume in decimeters cubed, we get 1.75 times 10 to the negative 4 moles. To find the amount of dissolved oxygen, we divide this value by 4. This is because the ratio of oxygen to sodium thiosulfate is 1 to 4. So this gives us 4.38 times 10 to the negative 5 moles of dissolved oxygen. Just like in the previous example, we then convert this to mass in grams, which gives us 1.40 times 10 to the negative 3 grams. When we convert to milligrams, we get 1.40 milligrams. To calculate the concentration of dissolved oxygen, we divide the mass in milligrams by the volume of the solution in decimeters cubed, which gives us 4.67 milligrams per decimeter cubed, or 4.67 ppm. The final step is to calculate the BOD of the river water sample. To do this, we subtract the final concentration of dissolved oxygen after 5 days from the initial concentration of dissolved oxygen. To do this, we subtract the final concentration of dissolved oxygen after 5 days from the initial concentration of dissolved oxygen. So the initial concentration was 8.11 mg per decimeter cubed, and the concentration of dissolved oxygen after 5 days was 4.67 mg per decimeter cubed. So this gives us a BOD of 3.44 mg per decimeter cubed, or 3.44 ppm. To end the video, we'll look at the relationship between the BOD and water quality. So a BOD of between 1 and 2 ppm indicates very good water quality. A BOD of 3 to 5 ppm means the water is moderately clean. A BOD of 6 to 9 ppm means that the water quality is somewhat polluted. And a BOD of greater than 10 ppm means the water is polluted.